What's up everybody? It's Mike B with Bombero Bus and this video is going to be about um, this and that with the 1800 that I'm building in particular going to start getting the end play set on it. So that's where we're at. The last time you saw this it was up on the stand in my shop and now we have it out here in the barn. Going to be setting the end play on this today. Long story short I have this flywheel torqued down. Now I'm going to torque down this rear pulley and we're going to start getting the measurements to see how many shims I need to find that sweet spot on my end play so I got my helper out here today let's get to it sweet the rear pulley is torqued down you just have to remember to get the flywheel lock off of there before you want to go turning stuff so let me get that off and uh we'll start taking some measurements here's the setup I'm going to use this uh dial indicator is from Harbor Freight but it works really good if you use it proper and it's the secret is in the linkage making sure that it is tight as possible before you give it its final twist on this handle here and that this is tight and basically it takes some practice but it's turned out to be a really good dial indicator what i've already done is pushed this uh this way to the rear and this is to the rear as far as it'll go now i'm gonna take a couple of prying tools and pry this flywheel out and see how many thousands it moves i'm going to try to use something pretty sturdy here big screwdriver and uh let's get this thing pried out and watch the numbers there see what kind of movement we get i'm going to give it a good one Thirty-nine thousand. Let's push it back in and give it one more check. Went right back to zero. Thirty-nine thousands. So there we go, 39 thousandths of end play. And to recap, the pulley is torqued down. The flywheel is torqued down. There are no shims in there right now. So the 39 thousandths is what we're working with. If we want three to five thousandths, that means I want to shoot for about four thousandths. So I need to get 35 thousandths of shims installed. I want to use three shims and get as close as I can to 35 thousandths with them. So I'm gonna go get the mic right now, start playing around with some shims until I can find three that will give me 35 thousandths. And I found them, three beautiful shims that equal 35 thousandths. You don't want any more than three. So if you remember, the end play on this without the shims was 39 thousandths. We'll subtract 35 thousandths from that after we get these shims installed which should leave me at a beautiful four thousandths of end play uh, front to back on this engine. And now I have to untorque this flywheel, which is not going to be too difficult when you have this torque multiplier right here. It's still no fun, but I'm going to get this flywheel off. I'm going to install these three shims and then retorque the flywheel and double check that I should be getting four thousandths on the dial indicator of in play. And that will lead to the dilemma. The dilemma is when this is off, the math says what math says, that this is gonna be four thousandths. So some people would go ahead and install their main seal uh, after they pull this off. But if you've made a mistake and your in play isn't where you want it to be, you have to pull that main seal out you could damage it etc so uh, I'll just not put it in to be safe uh, make sure I have my four thousandths and then I'll pull the flywheel off again and then install the main seal now the flywheel's off you know I used this pry bar you don't go gently with it especially with the new uh, flywheel and crank you, you're gonna have to you know go in a series around with the pry bar and eventually it'll come off it wasn't too bad though so 
let me get these three shims here and uh I just want to look again, make sure we got 35 thousandths. And there's the three of them together at 35 thousandths. And this is where they'll go. Remember, they go on before the rear main seal. So now I'm going to put the flywheel back on, torque it back down, and then we'll set up our dial indicator and check for final in play. Okay, that'll do for now. You can see how awesome it is to have one of these torque multipliers. This isn't mine. I borrowed it from DWGM, a good friend of mine. But if I had to do this with a breaker bar every time, hmm, I think I'd get a new hobby. There we are in our relaxed position. I don't know if you can see it. Our needle is a little bent, but we know how to use it. And what it's showing me is three and a half thousandths of in play. So if it's uh, three to five and I've got three and a half, I'm going to call that a win. One, two, three and a half. Yep, going to call that a win. So now is the place where... I wish I would have put the main seal in there because uh, I wouldn't have to take this back off again. But uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I won't show you that part. I'm going to get this flywheel off. There's an O-ring in there that I have to put on, the main seal, etc. One of the nice things about these flywheels is if you're wondering, you know, how does it orient Tate is there's an offset uh, dowel on there on the crank so there's only one way it goes on and uh, I'm gonna take a break and then I'll be back after I get this thing squared away and with that out of the way I'll show you what I'm gonna do next got the flywheel off here are the three shims still nice and pretty they didn't get smashed or no evidence of uh, too tight of a fit in there uh, here's my flywheel, uh, the rear main seal. Some call it the front main seal, but the important thing is that it fits really nice there on that nose. So the great thing, one of the things that I did pay for was this nice forged flywheel. And the nice thing about having a new one is there's no wear here. So your main seal has a, look at that nice snug fit on there. All right, I mean, I literally have to, to pop that off and I don't have to do the trick where I shorten this spring and try and tighten it up to a nose that's, you know, been worn out. So that's a good feeling. That should keep my uh, oil uh, from leaking there. And you don't want to forget your O-ring. It's going to go inside this groove there. I've already cleaned that out pretty good, still in the process of doing it. But you never want to forget. <laughs> Ask me how I know <laughs> to put this in before installing this flywheel back. So that's where we're at right now. I'm going to get these things done and move forward to getting this flywheel put back on for the final time. And then we'll do one more check on the end of play measurement and then the magic moment of the whole assembly still turning over just by hand with the pulley, uh, nothing jamming up and hearing that beautiful compression of each cylinder as it moves. But we'll get to that next. Let me do my due diligence and uh, get started with this. And back at the engine, I'm ready to put the main seal on. So those shims are back in there. That stack of shims that equal 35,000s. 
I cleaned off the inside really good. And I don't usually use a product around the main seal here. I have it before and I haven't. And if it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak. And it's usually because you have a bigger problem mm, that side of things. So I've just put a light coil coat of oil on that main seal. And also you can just tap it in there with your mallet. But man, this tool I think is so sweet. It, there's just something satisfying about watching that seal go in perfectly flat uh, all the way around. So now the other dilemma and a uh, discussion to be had is how far am I gonna push this in? Some people put it flat level with the surface. Some people leave it a little bit out. M me, I like to go just a hair inside of it just to where there's just a little lead. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so a little more. I'm gonna go in a little bit more. And again, this is a tool I think that's worth having. It's not mine. Uh, it's also borrowed by a VW Jim. And it's, I don't love it as quite as much as I do that torque multiplier, but this thing really is cool. See where we're at and that's it i mean i'm just going to keep doing that till this thing's sitting where i like it and it looks to be about uh, where i want it so let's see what's next that means flywheel is ready to go back in and you can see the flywheel o-ring is in there now i put a light coating of grease just a light coating and have cleaned this nose up really well. We're ready to get this back on. Okay, there it is, ready to torque down the flywheel for the final time. And before I put the gland nut on, you could see I have very small amount of blue Loctite on there. Some people don't use anything. Some people use red, some people use blue. If the gland nut is torqued proper with a nice uh, washer behind it, shouldn't have any problems, but I just like to put just, and I mean sparingly, a little bit of the blue Loctite. All right, just wanted to show you that we're zeroed out. Now I'm gonna use that same tool, pry the flywheel this way and see what we got. And it's looking like right on that three and a half thousands. Three and a half like, <laughs> almost four so i mean i'm gonna have to be happy with that now the big deal is will this assembly still turn over well and uh i'm gonna do it by turning by the pulley here i think that proves more this has a lot of leverage so of course it's going to be easy to spin with this flywheel so i'm going to go up to the front pulley and see what kind of rotation we've got now that our in play is set Okay, we're on the top dead center, number one. So I'm gonna start turning it clockwise the way it normally goes uh, when it's running. Pretty easy. I hear compression. Oh yeah. All right, just got through one compression cycle. All right, another one. What I'm going to do is just go through the whole firing order. Okay, I'm hearing good compression. It's turning relatively easy. And now I'm back to top dead center on the number one. So that felt really good. I'm going to be happy with that in play and call it a wrap on this video. I'm going to be moving forward with some other things, but for now, Let's shut it down there. So thanks for hanging out with us. If you liked it or it helped you, don't forget to subscribe. If not, leave some comments. I'm sure I opened myself up to many uh, potential for comments and arguments. I love to hear them. Uh, but either way, thanks for hanging out with us. And we'll catch you next time.